hey Rob from Produce Tech here and in this short tutorial I'm just going to show you a few production techniques that I've used to recreate the intro to this Hardwell track in response to a student request. I'm going to talk a bit about the MIDI clip itself so that's the MIDI notes being used to play the synth riff and then I'm going to go into the sound design talking about how I made the patch with operator and then how I processed and layered up that sound to make it um, bigger and fuller. So at the moment, the lead sound is being created by two MIDI tracks, both with operator on. If I solo them for a minute and just get rid of this one here, which we'll come back to in a moment, I'm just going to talk about the MIDI notes being used to play the synth. Now, what we have here is a polyphonic phrase, meaning we've got two notes being played or rather more than one note being played simultaneously. If I get rid of the upper notes for a minute by muting them, what we have now is a monophonic phrase, meaning we've just got one note being played at any one time. If you look at the lower notes in a phrase like this, it'll often give you a good idea of the key of your piece, because the lower note often centers around the tonic notes, so the actual key of the song itself, which is exactly what this phrase is doing. So it's centering around F sharp. Now we're in F sharp minor. Dance music tends to be in a minor scale. So if I play a, a minor scale in F sharp, it sounds like this. So once you know the, the minor notes in the scale, going from the F sharp to the F sharp, you can then just shift up or down to those different notes to create uh, whatever phrase you like. Now this is a very simple phrase in that it's starting off on the tonic on the, in the F sharp, it's jumping down to the fifth here, which is a very common note for a phrase to shift to. So it's just jumping down to the fifth, then it's walking up through the notes in the scale, back up to the F sharp, then it's jumping down one note lower in the scale, so it's the fourth an octave down, and then up to this note, which is just one note below in the scale, so it's the seventh, before returning to the tonic at the end here. So it's a very simple phrase. It sounds like this. Meanwhile, at the top here, We've got a similar kind of thing going on, but instead of centering around the, the tonic, the F sharp this time, it's around the third. But instead of the third being played down here, it's up an octave to form this compound interval here. Now this compound interval, with, which is just a minor third, where the third is up an octave, is a very common one that you hear in all sorts of dance music. And uh, just playing this interval and shifting it up and down um, with both mo notes moving in sync with one another through the notes in the scale can create a lot of very interesting patterns in um, kind of electro or, or EDM breakdowns. Uh, what's happening here is we're, we're starting off in that interval and then the um, notes are moving up through the notes in the scale. So as this lower section is jumping down to notes, this one is moving up again just through notes in the scale. So it's going up to the C sharp again. So we have this fifth. Um, and then it's returning to the A here, and then it's jumping up a little bit higher. So as this one jumps down a little bit lower, this one jumps up a little bit higher. So you've got a nice kind of symmetrical pattern here being created by these two melodic lines, with one centering around the tonic of F sharp and one around the A. So now I want to talk about the sound design behind the lead, which as I said at the start is being created by two instances of operator here, which is a very cool synth in live. So first up, I'm just going to add a new MIDI track to my project, and then in the browser here, I'm going to add operator to that track. And if I play it now, you can hear in its default state, it simply creates a sustained sine wave. In the central section here though now, I can change the parameters of this oscillator. So for example, I've got the amplitude envelope in the top corner here. So if I drag down the sustain, I can then drag left or right to set the decay value, which will define the duration of each note. I'm going to keep it nice and short like that. And then on the right side, you've got the waveform. So at the moment it's a sine wave, but we could use this menu here to change it to 
something else, like a sawtooth if you want something nice and colourful. But in the Hardwell track, the lead sound is hollow sounding, so I'm going to go for a square wave. And operator here, you have a choice of lots of different square waves, each one having a different numerical value after it. The size of that number simply correlates to the number of harmonics in the sound. So if you want an ultra colourful digitised sound, then you can choose a high value there. But I'm going to go for the simplest, square 3, which is a more traditional sounding square wave, just with a bit of extra triangulation, creating some extra colour. So that's our very basic waveform in place. But a cool thing about operator is, and it's in this state here, this configuration, all of these oscillators are actually feeding into one another. So rather than creating sound independently on their own, if you turn up the level, they then start to modulate the next oscillator down. So if I turn up the level of oscillator B, whilst our uh, MIDI clip is playing the track, I just mute the first one, you'll hear the effect it creates, this um, FM sound if I bring up the level of oscillator B. So you get a much more interesting sound there. But rather than have the level stay at one value, just like we did with oscillator A a moment ago, when I have oscillator B selected, I can change the envelope of that too. Again, I can bring down the sustain, and then I can set a decay value to something that was a bit shorter than the decay of A. And then what will happen is we'll only get the FM part of the sound happening on the initial transient, so just at the start of each note. So now we've got a very simple FM patch. So now let's go back to our original operator track so I can show you how the sound has been processed. First up though, I'll take off the insert effect and play the original patch, which is very similar to the one we just made, only oscillator B's level is lower and the pitch is a bit higher. So it's a subtler FM effect and the coloration is a bit different because I play with the pitch there. So it's a very simple, very clean sound, but this is actually a very good starting point if you're going to be adding lots of saturation, lots of distortion to it. If you start off with an already large, kind of noisy and distorted sound, and then add additional saturation, then the sound can become way too distorted and fuzzy and lose all of its definition. You can hear, with this much saturation going on with the drive set that high, it still makes the sound quite harsh and distorted, even from that very clean, very simple starting point. So the saturation is filling out the sound, making it a lot fatter. And then after that, I've simply got a reverb to add more character and depth, and then an EQ, which is picking out the middle frequencies and rolling off the bottom end. The reason I've rolled off the bottom there is because on the other operator track, what I've actually done is uh, duplicated this operator onto a new track, and then change the EQ setting slightly just to really boost the bass, and then added a filter to the end, which is rolling off all of the top end. So we're actually just left with the bassy frequencies. And this is what it sounds like. And you can hear if I bring this track in and out now, that it adds a nice bassiness to the sound. So what we could actually do with our new operator track is I could copy the three insert effects across by selecting them and then option dragging. And you can hear if I bring these effects in now, um, how much bigger the sound becomes. Just bringing the output down a bit there because we're getting a bit of overloading going on. And um, what I might do, though, is change this uh, EQ a bit. If I bring up the frequency of band 1, so it just leaves us with the upper frequencies. So 
somewhere around there might work. Might bring three down just a touch. So now what we're left with is this upper layer. And you hear, if I now start off with our original patch, and then bring in the bass layer, and now this upper layer, you can hear how each one adds a kind of different um, character, a different uh, area of the frequency spectrum to the sound, with the, our new layer adding an extra brightness now. So stacking up different layers like this by duplicating tracks across and then filtering or EQing them a certain way um, gives you much more control over your sound and um, allows you to create a much bigger, much fuller sound. And it also gives you a lot more options when it comes to processing as you, you can process the individual parts of the spectrum separately. And remember all of these tracks came from very simple operator patches that had a lot of uh, possibilities when it comes to processing because they're a very clean and very simple starting point. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. See you next time.